Solving a quadratic inequality can have a few extra steps than you're used to, and it looks just a little bit different from solving a normal quadratic equation. The reason for this is because our solutions uh, might represent entire ranges of values. We'll track down these ranges using a table a little bit later on. So the example we're going to go over is 2x plus x squared is less than or equal to 8. And here are some of the first things that you want to do with an inequality like this. First, go ahead and get everything over to one side, and go ahead and arrange things in descending order. That means as I go to write my terms, I'll start with the x squared term, then the x term. I'll move my 8 over, and now I'll have it in relation to 0. This is really important for inequalities because it's a lot easier determining positive or negative when things are in relation to zero, rather than trying to track things whether they are greater than or equal to a number. So we're going to work with this. Now, to start getting some ranges of values, we want to try and factor this and find out its zeros. So where is it actually equal to zero? Some quadratics can be factored rather nicely. Other times you may have to appeal to the quadratic formula. So let's see, I got my x times x, that would give me an x squared. Let's see, 2 times 4, that would give me an 8. Looks like my inside term is a positive 2, so I'll need a positive 4 and a negative 2 to do that. A uh, quick check on our first terms, outside and inside terms and last terms, and looks like this thing works out pretty good. So when you factor it, you get these uh, two spots where it could equal 0, at x equals 2, and x is equal to negative 4. Now, you want to remember these points because they help us split up the number line into ranges of values. Because it's around these points that we'll need to now test to see if those range of values are included or not. So here's what we need to do. First, let's set up a picture of this number line. Now let's put on those two points we found. So I have one at negative 4, and another one at 2. What we want to do is test things around these two points to see whether they satisfy our inequality. And what are we going to test them in? Well, we're going to use those factors that we found before. So I'm going to test this into x minus 2, and I'll test this into x plus 4. Alright, watch how this works. First I'm going to choose a number somewhere in this first interval, so I could choose anything between negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. So maybe I'll just choose something like a negative 5. I'm going to plug that right into this first factor. What I'm looking for is, is negative 5 when I plug it in a positive or negative? So negative 5 minus 2, that would be negative. So that's my clue that, that this little guy is always negative on this interval. Now I'm going to choose a point between negative 4 and 2. 0 seems like a good choice. Let's take that and put it into this factor. So 0 minus 2 would be minus 2 and that is negative. All right, moving on to this last interval, everything greater than 2. So again, let's pick a number. Um, let's choose 4. I'm going to grab 4, plug it in. 4 minus 2 is 2, and that is positive. So this little factor right here looks like it's negative, negative, and then positive on those intervals. All right, let's do the same thing for our second factor, then we'll start putting this information together. So choosing that point in the first interval, like a negative 5, plugging it in, negative 5 plus 4 is a negative 1, negative. Now I'll grab a test point in here, let's say 0, plug it in. So 0 plus 4 would be a positive 4, most important, positive. And let's grab something over here like a 4, plug it in, 4 plus 4 is a positive 8, again, positive. So what this is helping us do is it's helping us determine what each of the individual pieces in our quadratic are doing, whether they're positive or negative. Now, in our inequality, these two factors are being multiplied together. So now I'm going to examine their sign. 
So if this guy is negative, and this guy is negative, and they're being multiplied together, then the overall result will be positive. For the middle interval, negative times a positive would be negative. And for the last one, positive times a positive, positive. So this last row down here where I've combined all of that information is now telling me about my overall quadratic where it will be positive or where it will be negative. So we're going to use this to help build our intervals. Now, which one should we take? Should we take the positive one? Should we take the negative one? Well, it all depends on our original quadratic. Let's take a peek. So here are those two factors we've been testing. We want to know where are they less than or equal to zero. That's our clue that we'll be taking the negative intervals, wherever it's negative. We'll also be taking the endpoints because it says or equals to, and I know at 2 and at negative 4, both those spots would give me a 0. Alright, so looking back at this, I only have one negative interval, so this is what I want to use in my solution. So let's see, I'm looking at all of the values from negative 4 up to 2 and I could include either one of those. So this interval represents my solution set to the uh, quadratic inequality. It contains all of the numbers that will make it true. So be careful with these quadratics, make sure you factor them, test out the factors carefully, combine that information, and then write down your interval.